Hi, I'm Dina Wakely, and I'm here to show you a fun, artsy, mixed-media bird painting technique. You don't have to be an artist to know how to do this, you just have to be able to use a pencil. This is our finished canvas, and we'll show you how to do that step by step. So what we've done so far is taken a, a, a canvas, always apply a layer of gesso, acrylic paint needs gesso to act properly um, on a surface. So we've got gesso on here, and then blue paint. We've got light blue permanent, cobalt teal, some manganese blue, and then a little raw umber in the corners. So here's the trick for all of us that, that don't know how to draw very well. You find a piece of clip art or a picture from the internet or a book of birds that you really like and you get a piece of tracing paper, graphite paper, and you lay that over your canvas and you take a dull pencil and you're just going to trace just the basic outline of the birds. You don't need to draw in every feather um, you need their basic outline, you need their eyes and their beaks, and that, that's about it. That's all you need. So you pull that off, and your birds will be transferred right to your canvas. And then this is where the magic happens. This is called a Stabilo Marksall pencil, but I call it the magic pencil because it makes you look like you know how to draw when you don't. And the great thing about this pencil is it's water soluble. So it's not made for, for sketching, even though we all use it for sketching. What it's made for is to write on plastic. So it writes on acrylic paint really well, because acrylic paint is essentially plastic. So when you draw with this pencil, it makes a great dark line. And when you wet it with a brush, it turns into paint. You can see it, and you can even shade it out. See how it does that? This is the magic pencil, that's the magic right there. And so what I've learned by doing this over time is that if you do one, one line when you, when you trace your birds, when we draw over the birds, it looks like a kindergartner did it. But if you do a couple of lines, it looks artsy and, and fun. So that's what we're going to do on our birds. So you're gonna have a traced bird mark here that's gonna be fairly light. You're gonna go over it with the magic pencil. And don't do one kindergarten line. Loose pencil marks or what you need to do all over your birds. And then when they're completely traced in with the magic pencil, you're gonna go through with that wet brush and you're gonna dissolve the lines. Now, you're not gonna dissolve every line that you drew. You're gonna dissolve, you know, if you drew two lines, just dissolve one. Really light touch is all you need. And you're basically making yourself a little coloring book. Remember back in, the, in grade school days we all colored? with coloring books that had great black lines. This is just a coloring book of birds that you've just created. And you're gonna use it as the guideline for painting. Now, because this is soluble with water, anytime you paint over the magic pencil, I bet you can guess what would happen. Um, you will further m dissolve <laughs> the line. So what I will sometimes like to do is give it a quick spray with workable fixative. It dries really fast. It will help set that magic pencil so I don't get lots of muddy paint later on. Um, and, it, and it just helps keep, keep that magic pencil where you want it to be. And keep this nearby because we're not done with the magic pencil. So what I've learned over time too is that by making these birds, if you have the shadows and the highlights in the right place, they can be any color you want them to be. Because if the shadows and highlights are right, it will still look like a bird, and I can paint them goofy colors like purple and pink. And that's why I call them artsy birds, because they don't really look like a bird from the Audubon magazine. Um, they're just fun and funky birds um, that, that we're creating for, for our projects. So shadows and highlights are the key. Now that we've sketched our birds onto our canvas, we're ready to paint them and make them look colorful and beautiful. So let's talk about brush strokes really quickly. Um, the way to go wrong when you're painting these birds is to make brush strokes that are blobby. And let me show you an example of what I mean. By putting a lot of paint on your brush and then just kind of going like that. Um, that's not the key to making uh, these birds. The key to making these birds is to using a small flat brush. I like to use it dry as well, so don't get it super wet and then load your paint with color and our brush strokes need to emulate feathers because these are not realistic looking birds and so if we can make our brush strokes look feathery then we're just a step ahead and we don't have to draw in every single minute detail um, of the bird so what I do is I, I press and then I pull up I press and then I pull up and I get a feathery like stroke and so that's how I'm going to to, to paint these birds um, and the brush strokes will do the work for you for making them look sort of real. So let's start with our 
highlights. So take a look at your, the, the, the clip art or the photo that you traced onto your canvas. And everywhere that it's light, you will put white paint. And I will, again, keep my strokes really brushy, loose and feathery, feathery strokes. Now, if you paint over a line from, that you drew with your magic pencil, the great thing about the magic pencil is you just draw the line back in when we're done. So don't worry too much if you paint something and you think, oh, I shouldn't have you know, painted over that. We, there's nothing we can't fix. We can always draw that right back in. The other thing you need to know is that it's not imperative that you cover every single detail or space inside the bird's bodies. If you can still see the background a little bit, that's great because we're keeping very painterly brush strokes. And painterly means that they're not smooth, that you can see the hand of the artist in the brush stroke itself. So what I do is I put in my highlights. And then I, I choose a medium tone. And I know there's no uh, bright purple birds in nature, but I want them anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to put my bright purple brush strokes in. Now notice again, I am making my brush strokes those great loose brush strokes that come up at the end and kind of emulate a feather. So what, looking at my photo, I am just kind of filling in the color of the bird. Down here, I don't worry about it too much. I just add a little color. Um, again, we're not painting a detailed painting. We're just making fun birds for our, for our artwork, for our journals, and for our canvases. And if I paint over a highlight and I would think, oh, I shouldn't have painted over that, what can we do? We can put it right back in. This almost is an exercise in painting over the highlight and putting the highlight back in. So now we've done a medium tone, which, is, which I've decided to do purple. We did our highlights, which are white. And so now we need a shadow, right? So I'm going to do, I'm going to use a paints gray. You could use any, you could use a darker purple. You could use any darker color for those shadows. And shadows are what will really help your bird look interesting. All, um, all 3D objects in nature cast a shadow. And therefore, we need to make sure our birds have some shadow. And that, that's what will help them, our bright pink and purple birds, you know, look reasonably like birds in, in our journals and in our, in our pieces. Now, if you notice, some of my highlights are gone. And I will constantly go back and put my highlights right back in. So I'm missing this one a little bit. I'll come back. Notice I'm not cleaning my brush in between. Um, you certainly can. I'll just wipe it maybe on a palette. Um, I won't worry about it a whole lot. Because I do like to do this with a dry brush. As soon as you put your brush in that water, it will change the way the paint flows off the brush. But just play around with it. Make a bunch of these and um, see how you, you like to do it. See how the brush strokes work for you. Make sure you overlap your brush strokes. You don't do brush strokes that don't touch. They overlap each other. And that is the, you know, another key to making it look good. They're starting to come. They're starting to come together here. And another thing that I always say is that you're not going to like this till the end. So don't, you're not making zombie birds, I promise. You're going to like them really good at the end. So keep, keep going. You need those layers of paint to work together to give you that full image of that bird. I think they're looking pretty good already. Okay, I think they're looking pretty good. And because I am an art journaler who loves funky colors, I'm going to add a little unexpected color to my birds. I'm going to add some hot pink for no good reason except that I like it. So just around the edges, maybe where their wings would end, a little bit of hot pink color. Maybe even on top of their heads. If you do something you really hate, you can always take a baby wipe or a wet towel and wipe it up. But you just you just play with it and have confidence, and you just can't really do it wrong. See how that pink brightened them up a little bit? And then I'm going to put a little yellow on there as well. 
and brighten them up. If you look closely at these birds, you can tell that every inch of their bodies is not painted. Um, like I mentioned before, you can certainly leave some of it open. You get that painterly look like I was talking about. And it's a lot of pressure to paint the bodies perfectly. And that's why if you do these nice loose brush strokes, um, that pressure goes away and you can, you can let, let go of that idea of perfection. We don't need to be perfect at all. I don't worry about their legs. I don't worry about painting their legs. You're welcome to paint them if you wish. I do paint the branches. So just a little brown in the branches is great. I don't, they're not, the branches are not the focal point of the piece. So I don't worry about it a whole lot. Okay, they look nice. One thing that they're missing, however, is a strong eye. And a way to really make them look finished is to fix their eyeballs. So I always do that last. If you look at their eyes, their eyes are kind of disappearing into the bird. So I'll take my magic pencil and I will go over those eyes again. And because this pencil is made to draw in plastic, it will draw really well right over your acrylic. And then I'll take my paintbrush and kind of Cleopatra out their eyeballs a little bit. See how they're coming, they're looking a little better already with a stronger eye. Now every living creature has a catch light. So when, you, when you're painting a portrait or these little birds, we need to give them a little catch light. And a catch light is a reflection um, in the eye that makes you look alive. And so I'm going to make sure that my birdies have a catch light. So a little white paint on the tip of your brush, just the tiniest bit of white. And I'm going to add the dot. And if you look at your reference photo, you can see where the catch light is. Because the only thing that has eyeballs that don't have catch lights are, you know, plastic dolls. <laughs> A little bit, a white dot, it will really help them look like a living creature. A creature with unrealistic colors, <laughs> but a creature that we like. I love these funky artsy birds. They make me happy. And that is how easy it is to give them some paint. All right, I'm happy with how it looks. I've got shadows and highlights there in the right places, and my birds look good. So I'm gonna do some finishing off techniques. Sometimes I call this top texture, because I do it on top of my focal points. And one of the things I love to do is write. This is just a poster paint pen, and it will write over anything. And so I will um, write right onto the bodies of my birds. People always say, I hate my handwriting. And I say, too bad. The only person who hates your handwriting is you. And if you make it loose and flowy, you'll, you'll, you'll learn to love it. Just practice a lot. This dries like paint as well, and it dries permanent. So you could paint over it, and it won't smear. Then I'm going to add some top texture pattern with uh, spray ink and stencils. I love, love, love spray ink and stencils. One of my favorite things. Now, you need a roll of paper towels, you need a, a stencil, there's lots out there on the market today, and you need ink in the spray bottle. And the, two, the three words that you need to know about using spray ink are oops, oh well, because it will drip on your work, it will seep under the stencil, it will <laughs> not be perfect, and you have to spray and say oops, and then you have to say oh well. And be at peace with it and, it, and you'll love it. So I'm going to spray, hold my stencil down, do a quick little spray. I'm going to remove the stencil, and then I'm going to make one pass with the paper towels. I call this blotting. I'm going to roll towards me, and what happens is the paper towels will remove um, the really dark, thick color, and, and it, it's left with a more true color because these are very densely pigmented. They're actually made to be a fabric dye and we're not using them on fabric so it helps to remove some of that dye. I'm even going to spray right in the bird's bodies a little bit and maybe on my fingers but that's all right, right? Again, spray and 
blot. Notice also, I do not remove the paper towel from my roll until it is absolutely saturated with ink. And sometimes these look amazing, and I tear them off and save them, and they end up in my artwork. Um, because you couldn't do that pattern on purpose. It's just a great pattern. So I've got some stenciling in their bodies, some stenciling at the bottom, and I'm going to do a little bit more on the top in the sky. Again, just hold it down, spray, be at peace with what happens. If it drips, guess what? You have a drip on your birds and, and you'll love it. It'll be no problem at all. Spray and blot. So there I have added some interesting texture to my canvas and really truly made it a mixed media canvas with my words and my stenciling. This technique is one of many techniques that will be in my new book coming out with Northlight Books at the end of this year. You can find the book at your local retailer or online or at northlightshop.com. You can also come say hi to me and visit me at dinawakely.com. You can check my blog out for more work as well as see my teaching schedule. I teach online and in-person workshops all over the world. So come and say hello.